Hey, Flip Geometry, how you doing? We're diving into 6.3 today. We're going to be still playing with a little bit of uh, more parallelogram geometry. We're going to be doing some proofs with parallelograms this time. So I know you're thrilled about proofs. We did not leave them behind the triangles. Uh, they are with you to stay. Let's get started. One theorem that will help you prove that something is a parallelogram is this one. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So if you can demonstrate that uh, like AB is congruent to DC, then you have got, come halfway to this particular theorem's proof. And then you would also need to demonstrate that the other sides are congruent as well. If you can show that these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent, you have by definition a parallelogram. You can't have um, two opposite pairs of congruent sides without the shape being a parallelogram. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. The other way is to demonstrate that only one pair of the sides, the opposite sides, are congruent but are also parallel. If you can say that AB and CD are, are parallel and congruent, then you have a parallelogram. It doesn't matter what you do or don't know about these sides. If these sides are congruent and parallel, you have a parallelogram. Okay. Another way to do it. Um, is to say that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. If you can demonstrate that angle D and angle B are congruent and that angle A and angle C are congruent, then you have, by definition, a parallelogram. And uh, again, you can, you can get to this if you were to say that these are parallel lines and transversals. And if you can demonstrate that all of these angles are congruent, then you can demonstrate that these are all parallel lines, and so you have a parallelogram. Okay, so if you can demonstrate that the opposite angles are congruent, then you can demonstrate that the parallelogram or that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We've got another one here. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram if its diagonals bisect each other. Now, I misspoke in the last two lectures. I thought that it was true that in a parallelogram, the diagonals always meet at a right angle. I've since discovered that that was wrong, so I'm sorry about that. Um, that's a rhombus the diagonals of a parallelogram always bisect each other, but that's all that we can say about them. So if you can demonstrate that like OD and OB are congruent and that AO and OC are congruent, then you have also demonstrated that this is a parallelogram. The parallelogram diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so those are the different ways to demonstrate that a given quadrilateral is in fact a parallelogram. Let's look at some examples. Let's look at some quadrilaterals here and see if we can demonstrate that these are in fact parallelograms. In this particular example, it just says explain your reasoning. Um, you would have to be doing proofs uh, in the real world. So, but let's just look at this. We can see that in this, in this uh, parallelogram, or in this quadrilateral, I should say, that it's marked that EF and DG are congruent. So we know that opposite sides are congruent. I don't know anything about these other sides. In order to demonstrate that this is a quadrilateral, I'd either have to be able to prove that these sides are also congruent, or I would need to be able to prove that these two sides are parallel. Well, I can demonstrate that these two sides are parallel because I'm given these angles. Um, if we draw this and this as lines, and we're testing to see are those lines parallel, we can cut them with a transversal and consecutive interior angles are supplementary. 108 plus 72 equals 180 degrees. Consecutive interior supplementary angles demonstrates that the two lines that you're looking at are in fact parallel, cut by a transversal. So now I know that DG and EF are parallel and I've been given that they are congruent. So opposite uh, sides being congruent and parallel, that is in fact a parallelogram. Here in this next one, I have uh, opposite angles, but I don't know that the opposite angles are congruent. I know that consecutive angles are congruent. Well, that doesn't help me. Um, the opposite angles being congruent is what I need to know if I'm going to demonstrate that this is a parallelogram. I don't know that, and so this may not be a parallelogram. This could actually be a trapezoid, um, but I don't know that either. So, here I have another example. If I have at least one 90-degree angle in a quadrilateral, um, I, might have a, uh, I might have a parallelogram if I knew that the, uh, that the sides were 
that the sides were congruent, but I don't know that that's true. Um, they, the sides are not marked. Um, I have two angles being marked as 90 degrees, uh, but that doesn't necessarily tell me anything about these angles. Um, and that doesn't tell me about the lengths of any of these sides. So I can't demonstrate that this one is in fact a parallelogram either. So of the three examples here, I can only show that one is a parallelogram. Let's look at another example here. I want to see if I can determine the variable values that would show that this is in fact a parallelogram. If I want to show that this is a parallelogram and I know that this is 5a and this is 20, I need these two things to be congruent, right? Because in a parallelogram, the diagonals are bisected, so 5a equals 20. Um, so if this is a parallelogram, then a would need to be 4. Okay. Same thing over here. This diagonal set, 6b plus 2, has to equal 7b minus 4. Um, and so I would need to uh, be able to solve for that here. 7b minus 4 equals 6b plus 2. I would need to solve for the fact that b equals 6. And then I could plug that back in and get the actual dimensions of PT and of TR. Okay, let's do one more like that. Here I have a parallel, or a potential parallelogram, and if I wanted to show that it is in fact a parallelogram, then these two sides need to be congruent, and these two sides need to be congruent. So 2x should equal y plus 14, and x plus 11 should equal y. So I can set these uh, equations up, I can substitute and solve, and I can determine um, that 25 equals x and y equals 36 and then I can plug those values back in and get the actual dimensions of the sides of this parallelogram. Okay, that's the kind of stuff that you'll be doing. There's one more theorem idea, actually two more theorem ideas that we need to run by you real quick. This next one's kind of interesting. If I want to take a uh, pair of polygons and they can be irregular bizarre polygons like the ones you're looking at here. And if I want to see if two bizarre polygons are congruent, what I need to do is cut these bizarre polygons into triangles. And so this strange looking thing here has been cut into triangles. And I've got another shape over here that I think may be congruent. I cut it into uh, triangles in the same pattern. And now comes the fun job of trying to demonstrate if this triangle is congruent to this triangle. If it is, then I can move on and say, is this triangle congruent to this triangle? If it is, then I can move on to this one and this one, etc., and will work my way through the shape. And if I can demonstrate that every triangle in this polygon is congruent to the corresponding triangle in this polygon, then I have in fact demonstrated that these two bizarre irregular polygons are congruent. Now, it doesn't have to be this hard, they don't have to be that strange, but anytime you have two polygons and you want to say, are these congruent polygons, what you have to do is break the polygons into triangles, demonstrate that the, the uh, constituent triangles are congruent to their corresponding triangle in the other shape, and then you've demonstrated that the polygons as a whole are congruent. So that's a good time. We'll do a couple of those tomorrow. You thought that just because we left triangles behind, we got to stop doing side angle side. Ha! <laughs> You're wrong. Uh, parallelograms can be demonstrated to be congruent through side angle side as well. So we have uh, this last theorem for you today. If you want to show that two parallelograms are congruent to each other, you need to demonstrate side angle side. That two consecutive sides and the included angle between them are congruent in the two uh, parallelograms. Um, and if you can do that, then you have congruent parallelograms. You have to already know that they're parallelograms, all, all, otherwise this won't work. If you just have two quadrilaterals, side angle side doesn't prove that they're congruent. But if you know that they're parallelograms, then side angle side works for parallelograms, just like it works for triangles. So we will do some of this tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Otherwise, um, I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. Good night.